from there. Nice. Okay, so that's recording. Everything is going, so we'll just so take a beat and when we're ready to start, we start. Yeah, so I think we should just run over. Should we do like a welcome welcome, welcome to episode one of the yeah. Naked Wine Pod? Yeah, we'll just do a welcome and introduce ourselves and get right to it. Yeah. Are you ready? And then, <laughs> yes. Are you ready? <laughs> Wait, should we have wine in our, we should have a little wine in our okay, glass. Okay, let's have some wine. <laughs> I think having a little in our glass and then introducing the bottle is a good idea. Okay. We're a lot in our glass. All right, you ready? I think we start with a cheers and then we'll go right into it, okay? All right. Perfect, I'm ready. Ready? Cheers! Cheers! Hello! Well, and welcome to the Naked Wine Podcast. I'm Kendra, this is... Remington Real. And uh, this is our episode one, which as of now is going to be all about natural wine because that's kind of what we're into. What in the hay is natural wine? What in the hayo? So <laughs> we may not have all the experience in the world and all the certifications, but hey, we've been drinking wine for 20 years. We may have zero certifications. Yeah, zero. But that's all right. That's fine. Um, been drinking wine for plenty of years. Yes, more than we should probably admit. <laughs> so why naked wine? I think because we love wine that is stripped down from all the BS. Yes. And all the additives and all the clothing that you can put on top of wine to mask it and to change it. So mm -hmm. we're not naked now, but maybe we can do a future podcast where we're... Uh, uh, maybe. Oh my gosh. A little bit more risque. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> but... <laughs> So, let's hop <laughs> anyway. into what we're drinking today. Hi, Mom. This is a French wine. Mm -hmm. it, it is a natural. It is a natural. I mean, it's the natural wine podcast. Naked wine podcast. Okay. So, <laughs> it is from the Loire, specifically from Chenin. Now, this may be the hardest part of the podcast, is pronouncing the name of the chateau. I already yelled at Remington earlier for picking such a tricky wine to pronounce for the podcast. first one. Yeah. Chateau du Petit Thoraz, and the winemaker named it Les Georges. Les, the American pronouncement. Les Jorge. Les Jorge. <laughs> it's a 2017, and of course, it's a natural. Mm -hmm. It is imported by Rosenthal. I think we need to do a whole podcast on... Uh, an episode on importers because yeah. that was a huge tool for me. True. Different podcast, different podcast. <laughs> and we'll we found there. it at Bar and Garden mm -hmm. in Culver City. We are City. in Los Angeles. Well, technically Hermosa Beach right now, but in the LA area. Bar and Garden, local Culver City, Los Angeles shop. Check them out. If you're in LA, they're amazing. Anyways, this wine, let's... let's Should we try it? Yeah, let's let's try it because okay. we haven't already tasted it. We'll another cheers. Let's see. Do a little smell, a swirl, and then a smell. Yeah, I always like to smell and swirl, and then smell again. Well, that's because you're very unclumsy. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. All right. Mmm. Very nice. So this is all Cab Franc, correct? Yes. 100% Cab Franc, which typically has like those vegetal, mm -hmm. sometimes jalapeno-y. Yeah, like I don't spice. Take, or green, pe um, green bell pepper. I learned that from all my extensive training. Mm -hmm. um, I don't taste as much of the green bell pepper. I'm not getting peppers, but I, well, I'm getting pepper. I'm not getting like green Green, peppers. like vegetal green. Yeah, more like the spice like you would put on your yeah. green bell pepper, but Medium body, medium tannin. Medium do, acidity. It's kind of very, very well balanced. Like early Rem and Kendra wine drinking was like, mm -hmm. give us fruit, mm -hmm. jammy, and tannin. And oh, now yeah. we typically like a little fruit lower punch. fruit with tannin. <laughs> with tannin. <laughs> and make it jammy. <laughs> um, but now we kind of like a little bit lower tannin, higher acidity kind of wine. So I, this is a kind of medium on the scale. I think it's medium, yeah. It's quite nice though. It is nice. It's It's... Great to sip. Great to sip. Reading into uh, Shannon a little bit more specifically, where the chateau is located, it's very, very limestony, kind very of mineral dry. soils. So mm -hmm. that shows through in the wine a little bit. Yeah, it does kind of taste like you're you licked a stone for a second. Licked a limestone. <laughs> licked in a limestone. Chinon. <laughs> totally. We should be so lucky. <laughs> so 
I like it. I think we need to introduce ourselves a little bit more. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's see what we're going to do. Oh, we're going to ask some questions. Let's, I, we'll interview each other. I think we should interview one another okay. with some wine related questions. Okay. And then we'll get into natural wine. <laughs> Discussing. But we're more important. I feel like you need to know a little bit more about us just to make us. We could be crazy. We are crazy. And you're listening to us right now. So thank you. Okay. Maybe we'll each just randomly pick one of these questions. Yeah, that sounds good. Pop back and forth. Okay. I'll go first. Um, what? was the first wine you ever drank? The first wine I ever drank is whatever they put in that god-awful chalice at church. Because <laughs> oh. truthfully, I grew up Catholic, Minnesota. <laughs> I probably didn't even drink wine until maybe senior year in high school, but like church every Sunday, yeah. that odd mixture of grape juice and... Something else watered down that 200 people sipped out of. I mean, hello, that's not happening that's anytime a soon right in now. the future. So I what, love it. Communion. What, whatever the communion wine was. Yeah. Um, was it, it was, tasty? It wasn't. What were your tasting notes? It wasn't delicious, <laughs> but as a child, I wasn't the child that like gulped it because I'm like, oh, alcohol. I was like, little sip as possible so I don't get judged. Oh. I was too much of a goody two shoes, and nowadays, <laughs> you can attest. I'm not. Not the case. Not the case. <laughs> we all change, you know? Remy's very, all right. Remy's very good at chugging his wine. Kendra, yeah. let's see. Okay, tell me about your first time or experience drinking a natural wine. Well, um, as we'll get into later, it's kind of hard to know, you know, when you're drinking one, if it is one. So it's very possible that, and I'm assuming the first time would be when I was in Europe, because we traveled a lot when I was little. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming I would have had a natural, natural-esque wine. Yeah, because you're from this weird interesting country. country. <laughs> Maybe we'll get into that later. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but but uh, the first time as an adult where I knew it was natural wine and kind of what started getting me into it, I think I was in Nashville with one of my friends who's a psalm, and she brought out this really yummy pet nat, and... We'll probably talk about pet nats later, but they have like a little bottle top on it instead of a cork. And I was like, ooh, that's bubbles? What is that? And she's like, yeah, well, it's like a natural bubbles. And I loved it. And the rest was history. And we'll Alexa. Alexa, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> we can do some editing or we, not. We're not going to do any <laughs> editing. We already decided before we did this, we would do zero editing. So if one of us has to pee... You're stuck with the other one for not a little bit. for a minute. We'll anyway, see. so yeah, it was a pet nat in Nashville. Uh, probably like three years ago, maybe? Four oh. years ago? Did you like it at the time? I loved it. Really? It's that Biercino one that we still get. Ah, yeah, that one's easy. Biercino, I think like yeah. NorCal, Santa Cruz Winery. Yeah. Pretty floral. Very delicate. dry. Very floral. Yummy. All right, Remington. Okay. Um, was there ever a time when you didn't care for wine and why? Yes. So I was late to the drinking game. I mean, perspective, you know, in perspective. Like, what, like 16? No, like <laughs> 17, 18. Uh. Okay, okay. Like, I wasn't sneaking. I was the goody two shoes. Like I said, those, those days are long gone. And wine was not on my list. College, beer pong, all that jazz came, crazy party. But wine, wine out of a bag, slap the bag. That's. Oh That's God. what I know of wine. Friends, yeah. And my, my grandpa to this day, God bless his soul. Shout out to Boppy in Minnesota. Um, still alive, by the way. His favorite wine is the giant gallon jug, Carlos Rossi. Okay. I bring fancy ass naturals that ship it in my luggage. Or <laughs> he really USPS. does. He really does. He checks like a bag of wine sometimes. I bring it all over. And I bring it Christmas dinner at Boppy's house in Spicer, Minnesota. And he brings out the jug and sets it on the table. He says, I don't care what you got. Nothing can beat Carlos Rossi. So, right. anyway. Did you do a taste test? I, a blind tasting? I, n no. <laughs> you know what? It's cold. The colder it is, the better it tastes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I haven't stooped that low in a long time, but it's, it's possible. Right. Um, Good answer. I didn't care for it in college. I, I came to it as a mature adult. Sure. Uh, let's let's ask you one more. Okay. All right. What is your favorite time to drink wine? 
I don't think there's ever a bad time to drink wine. This unless is true. maybe I don't really want wine right before I go on a run or something. But other than that, I pretty much would be down for, well, it depends if it's like morning. We went away for a little New Year's trip, and I mean, we were having bubbles by like 9 a.m. I mean, that's what you do on a New Year's trip. So, um, bubbles in the morning, um, bubbles in the afternoon, or a nice chilled white. I don't drink that much white, but I'm getting there, guys. Um, and red anytime after lunch, I would say. So, all the time. <laughs> Wine, all the time. That's a good answer. Especially when you're talking about natural wine. Wait, well, I, let, before we get into natural wine, I'll ask you one more question. Okay. Why do you like drinking natural wine? Why do I like drinking natural wine? We got to get into what natural wine all is, but... You can answer it afterwards okay. if you want. I'll answer it before and afterwards. Okay. If you are listening because you love natural wine or maybe you don't know anything about it, whether this is scientifically proven or not, one of the first things I noticed was less hangover and yes. I can drink more wine. Which is the whole point. I was drinking way more wine. I wasn't getting as hungover. May get some haters for this because there's like some scientific evidence for, to, and fro. But there's some simple facts about it. Mm -hmm. No pesticides. Lower in sugar. Lower in alcohol. Lower in alcohol. There's not all the preservatives. I mean, there are a bunch of things. So it was primarily that. No bird bones. Yeah. We'll get from to that like later. Machine harvesting. <laughs> um, I mean, that's that's a huge one. Who who doesn't like to like. Brun booze it up and yeah. brunch with their friends but like yeah those hangover you tell somebody that doesn't know what natural wine is like i drank a bottle or two last yeah. night they're like hangover city how are you alive not the case and us i mean it's like kind of embarrassing how many bottles of natural wine you can crush between us in 24 hours yeah it's, it's... but then we're like sprinting the next morning we're fine we're a good little duo <laughs> detox retox yes. um but besides that i mean better for the earth Better for the farmers. Mm -hmm. we can better, for us. better for us. Yeah. Better for us. Better, better for farmers. Better for us. <laughs> well put. All right, let's get into it because I know you guys are just sitting on the edge of your seat wondering what the F natural wine is. And it's confusing. It is confusing <laughs> because it'd be easier if I could look at my notes here and be like, the definition of natural wine is. But there isn't one. <laughs> there isn't one. There's there, no definition. There, there really isn't a definition of natural wine. But... The simplest way to think about it is farming. When you think about wine, it comes from a produce. It comes from grapes. Um, it can be organically farmed. It can be biodynamically farmed. It could be sustainably farmed or it could be none of the above. Mm -hmm. It could have a certification saying that it is one of those things or they really could be doing it one way and not pay for the certification. And you just have to know and believe that yeah. the, um, the vineyard is making it in a certain way. So when you think about winemaking, you have to think about farming. Because without farming the grapes, you have no wine. And wine at its simplest level is just fermented grape juice. Yeah. I mean, they've been drinking it since... Pff, yeah. I don't know. Biblical I think, days. I think the, the biblical, yeah, the origin of wine might be in the country of Georgia and they've been mm -hmm. thousands of years, you know, and they didn't have all those gadgets and pesticides yeah. back then. So it's fermented. You can ferment almost any produce, fermented grape juice. So let's talk about loosely some of the definitions. And I think it's important to note right off the bat that we're, like, we're talking about different things. So there's natural wine, there's organic grapes, there's organic wine, there's biodynamic, but it think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just important to know if it's organic or if it's biodynamic, it does not mean it's necessarily a natural wine. Totally. Yeah. That's, Which I think a lot of people, it's a whole other us rant. too, in the beginning, you get very confused by that. You're like, oh, it's biodynamic. It must be natural. When you try it, most of the times, if yeah. you find out it's biodynamic, pretty yeah. good hint if they care about the land that much that they're bearing cow manure and mm -hmm. horns and harvested on the moon cycles that they're caring a little bit more about yeah, the winemaking. Yeah, they're not going to be dumping like a pound of sugar. In but <laughs> because natural wine is a thing and it's trendy, mm -hmm. a lot of stores, love you and hate you Whole Foods, have organic wines. Yeah. Even Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's, Two Buck Chuck, infamous. Mm -hmm. They have a now organic Charles Shaw for one dollar more, three buck chuck. <laughs> so 
And I guarantee you, you will not find me drinking that three no. buck chug. Not because no. I, I'm, we at Worth Rifters, we like good deals, but just because it's organic doesn't mean that they didn't take the other steps in the cellar yes. to make the wine in a natural way. Yeah, and to not tamper with it. So that's why it's confusing. It is so, confusing. Well, let's dive into it. Let's dive into it. Okay. So organic viticulture. Um, you can get the certification. A lot of new school winemakers don't, and they do it anyway because mm -hmm. they don't want to pay for the certification or um, they don't want to be responsible for the vineyards around them in case they're not farming in that way and pesticides ripped over and they get tested and then all their time and money to get the certification yeah. is a waste. So it's a certification you can get. And if you see it on the label, a lot of times it's BO in like Europe. Hmm. It's a point in the right direction, I would say. Um, it definitely is helpful, but it can be costly and, and not everybody does it. And sometimes though, especially in stores, like non-wine stores, so kind of, you know, like we said, like love you, hate you, Whole Foods kind of a thing. Same, th like I, if I see organic, like really big on the label of the wine, mm. I'm like, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. If that's their number one selling point, yeah. then no. That's just like a buzzword they're putting on there to try to trick you. So don't get excited. <laughs> A little more if it's like sneaky hidden in the back and you have to search for it then it's like oh great they took the extra step step to get like the totally totally so on the biodynamic you'll sometimes see or read that a wine is biodynamically farmed the long and short on it rudolf steiner is the father of biodynamics he invented this i don't know couple centuries ago century and a half i don't know the exact date but it has all these weird rules about burying cow manure in a horn and putting it under your soil and harvesting on the moon cycles. Blah, 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 blah. Um, no pesticides using like animals or hawks if you have like a worm or a bird problem. It's a I lot of rules. It's a lot of rules. Um, it's a hard certification to get. But I will say that wines typically taste better or of higher quality when they're biodynamic. Not always, but because, maybe not because of the cow manure, yeah. but because the person in the vineyard is has to be in the field all the time. They're yeah. taking more care Basically, of... Basically, the grapes are pampered. They are, pa they pampered, are pampered grapes. Pampered grapes. By hands. <laughs> yes. Not by machines. By hands. They are getting a lot of loving. A lot of loving. More loving, more care, better end product. Yeah. So that's the rundown on biodynamic. What are, well, we can get to this later, but I'd love to circle back on how a wine can be biodynamic and not natural, but we, we can come back to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Sustainable farming practices. I mean, a lot of wines are sustainably farmed. I think, I don't even know if that's a certification, but I, I literally feel like, any wine website you go to says we mm -hmm. use sustainable farming practices. Yeah. That's like a base. Like if you're not doing that, then you're not farming. You're not yeah. doing the earth a service. If you're not sustainably farming, then I don't even know if you're really farming. Yeah. So I don't that's know what you're doing then. At the base level, that's like the bare minimum. And then you just kind of have like conventionally made and processed wines. And in my eyes, I'm just thinking like big grocery store wine labels mm -hmm. that my parents love and drink sorry mom and dad love you to death but like it's what's in grocery stores if you see it in a grocery store in idaho and then a grocery store in florida and your small yeah. little shop in california and then in hawaii you're like mm. and it's the same and the same price and the same product year in year out it's yeah. probably a mass produced like conventional wine and i mean i've had many a lovely memory on those kind of wines but i certainly would not drink them right now. It's a, it's a memory. It's a memory. It's a fond no, memory. No, a fond memory that we don't need to repeat for the moment. Yeah, totally. But a little helpful tip. Tip. Um, old school wines generally tend to be farmed organically or biodynamically. Yes. Without saying so, or it's a better assumption. Yeah, and also like a good rule of thumb is okay so like let's say you walk into your wine store and the lovely wine dude or wine chick is like 
passed out from a wine tasting and they can't help you and you have no <laughs> idea you have no idea what like a natural okay. wine is a good rule of thumb is to get an old world wine so like france italy because the, they've been doing it for so long and the rules over there are so much um more like more, more strict. strict and more conducive to like mm -hmm. natural natural wine making methods um compared to the u.s unfortunately so like instead of getting a big bold california cab that you know nothing about i would go for you yeah. know, like a bordeaux or something Just like pick that a crew or an appellation or the word france <laughs> anything that says france <laughs> Just and, there, and there that. are a bunch of other old world wines spain totally there's um, tons portugal i mean delicious yeah, i would take like a european wine over, over an unknown gamble yes sorry usa we love yeah. you but it makes sense i mean they've been a lot they've been around a lot longer but that's if you're gambling yeah that's if you're gambling but hopefully by the end of listening to us you won't be gambling anymore and you'll know a little bit more about how to make an educated decision maybe mm. because we're great if we educators. do a good job <laughs> all right so we I covered farming great job thank you thank you miss you too thanks baby. let's talk about elements of natural wine beyond farming okay so I want to talk about these elements, and then I think we should rank them in importance for you and I each of what we look for in a natural wine. Like okay. what's most important. A lot of times it won't have all seven or eight or elements, but yeah. if they have some of our tops, we're like, I'll drink it. It fits in, fits in my box. So yeah. I mean, you can't sometimes, you just can't have natural wine, and you just still want to have wine and have fun with your friends. That happens. <laughs> All the time. If you're on a booze cruise, they ain't having natural wine unless nope. you sneak your own up. <laughs> okay, so natural wine. Number one, should be at least organically farmed, biodynamically farmed. It might not say that or might not be certified. It's not just because it doesn't say organically farmed or biodynamically farmed on the label. It could still be a natural. Yeah. You, you just would have to do some research. Just have to do just a little put research. Put in Google, look at the, their website, they'll tell you. I do that all the time now. Just Google Vivino. Mm -hmm. Vivino's great for, for reviews and tasting notes, but like, you can... And to know, much, to know how much like a cheap bottle your friend yeah, brought over for you. totally. Was. That's <laughs> very They're useful. like, oh, here's the bottle of wine someone gave me five years ago. It's been in my fridge. And you're like... Never invited You're you. like, before you pour the wine, you Vivino it. It's like $4 Chardonnay. And you're like, oh, let's open yours. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. You can drink that. Thank you. Um, Sorry. I'm me. Yeah. Where, where was I? I apologize. Oh. Okay, okay, so good. organically or biodynamic is great, but it may not be on the label. It may not be on the label. Google search the winery, go to the about page, do a quick read. Mm -hmm. Very useful. Another thing, yeast. In order to make alcohol, you need to have yeast. What do you use yeast like in order to make alcohol? Sugar. Oh, yeah. Grapes, fortunately, <laughs> are really high in sugar. They're actually one of the worst fruits to eat on its own for you, but... <laughs> We love to drink them. Oh, we do love to drink them. Um, using native yeast in winemaking. Everything has yeast on it, practically. Anything that you're farming outside will have some sort of native yeast on it. And in my mind, that is the terroir. Not only the soil that's giving to the plant, but the yeast will change based on the area. Maybe why New York bagels taste so great because of the water. Maybe why SF sourdough tastes so amazing because of the yeast or the water there. Totally. Same thing with grapes. Big element about natural wine is using native yeast opposed to conventionally made wine, which would use and not you would inoculate it with like a modified GMO. Yeast. So they would just like dump yeast in there. Like, Kill the old native yeast and dump their new controlled yeast and, in. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's more controllable, the modified yeast can withstand higher alcohol contents. You can produce like jammier wines. Yeah, do you and think? And sometimes you can flavor it with the yeast. Like there's pineapple yeast. That was my question because I didn't know. You can. Is it like a? It's a taste thing too. So totally you can, like, a taste thing. Tamper with a natural. You taste. can add different yeasts that kind of have different flavor characteristics. Okay. So native yeast and number three, hand harvested versus machine harvested. And you're like, okay, right, there's now a little extra, like, <laughs> hand pick your great sources, machine harvesting. But didn't we learn something um, crazy there about is machine some harvesting? Good reason. So think about, picture this. So you're in a vineyard, and there's these beautiful vines and these beautiful grapes, and it's harvest time. And um, 
just picture this massive machine coming bulldozing through the aisles and just like scraping in the grapes, but not just the grapes, like branches, um, leaves and little birds, birds. little like field Buggies. mice, bugs, <laughs> that's all getting in there and that's all being like crushed and put in your wine. So you're drinking like very, 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 very small, small amounts. amounts of mice blood and bird bone and that's it's, not things we need to be consuming. It's a reality. It's not, yeah, it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's just, a reality. It's, it, it, it is true. It's true. Um, and they generally put enough, you know, like... Um, you know, sulfur or preservatives in it where that like knocks right. it out and it makes it fine, but it's the whole principle. But that's even worse. That and moldy grapes that. that don't yeah. need to be picked. So hand harvesting is a huge one. You can pick mm -hmm. ripe grapes without all of its little grape friends, mice and bugs and yeah, stuff that comes along with it. We don't want that it. in our wine. No, thank you. And moving on, number four, no additions in the cellar. So by additions, we went from farming to mm -hmm. now we're in the cellar. And now we have our grapes, and we gotta make one with it. And they've been crushed, right? Um, Not yet. We're about to crush them. We're about to crush them. Okay. But things you can add in the winemaking process is extra sugar. You yeah. can feed your yeast more sugar to produce more alcohol. So you're gonna get drunk quicker, but more regrets in the morning. More regrets in the morning. Worse headache. A little worse headache. It'll produce higher ABV wines. Maybe get that jammy, big mm -hmm. mouth feel quality that a lot of people's palates are tuned to. Yeah. But a lot of that residual sugar stays there and yeah. doesn't get um, eaten up. So it's also wine, make it taste very sweet too. And delicious. But yeah, natural wine generally tends to have less. Less residual sugar. sugar. More dry. There's mega purple. You can color your wine. Isn't that nuts? Like, if the wine isn't, like, people look and they want deep velvet, you know, yeah. not velvet, um, violet. Deep violet, violet purple. dark purple. And if the Whereas wine, this, for example, is, like, very ruby, like, red. It very. Yeah. Yeah, very ruby. But you can color it. People will color their wines to the industry standard or what yeah. people's taste buds are attuned to. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different additives. Oh, I just thought of this. Do you think those like non-natural wines stain your teeth more than natural mm -hmm. ones? I never even thought of that until just now. I literally never but thought about I that. But I feel either. like for real, I, I this is probably bullshit. It's a good theory. Because I haven't looked this up. So this is my theory, it's my a new good theory. theory. Let it be known you heard it from me. Because I do feel like since we've started drinking naturals almost exclusively, like my I don't get the wine teeth as much. Yeah. I know, because I'm a huge coffee drinker. It could be and the grapes, but I don't know. No, it probably make a purple. It could be the dyes. It could be. Mega Let's purple. figure out if make a purple stains your teeth. This is mm -hmm. a good. I bet it does. Next <laughs> time, I'll check in and let y'all know. <laughs> so there are a whole bunch of additives. So generally, adding no additives in oh, the winemaking. I just wanted a quick little note because we were talking about like if when you add sugar, it's gonna make it higher in alcohol. Another really good tip if you're looking at a bottle of wine and you're trying to figure out if it's a natural or not, mm. or even just if you're not going to have as bad of a hangover in the morning, is look at the yeah. alcohol level. If it's super, super high, you know, like, what do you think? I mean, like 15 is, is oh, yeah. way up there. 14, 15. 14, 15. Just stay away from it because one, it's definitely not a natural, yeah. and two, you'll just thank yourself in the morning. So look for something that's on the lower side. Lower side and delving into this even more, native yeast can generally withstand something up to like 12.5, 13% alcohol content before they die. Yeah. So that's why they use modified yeast that can withstand a higher alcohol content so they can produce bigger board wines. So that's something to keep in mind when looking. Um, it's a good helpful indicator if it's natural or not. Um, another thing, no fining and no filtering. So explain those to us. It's not a requirement, um, but a lot of times natural winemakers won't fine or they won't filter. So filtering, pretty easy. Filtering your wine to get out like the gunk, maybe the extra yeast that's sitting there in the bottom of it, um, any of the grape skins, the must. A lot of times there's not a ton of that, but um, so it's more of like a like an aesthetic thing. An aesthetic thing. They're both aesthetic things because then no fining is essentially like declouding your wine. Because mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, it's like a very raw product. And how do you mm -hmm. get this silky smooth glass of wine that looks so beautiful and you can see through it in your glass? You have to fine it. Yeah. Now what fining means is declouding. But how do you do that? There are a bunch of like gross ways. Yeah, I was gonna say, please, please say at least one. <laughs> we'll like do a whole podcast on on this because there are a ton of different ways on how you fine a wine. 
If you're going to do it kind of in the unnatural style, you may use um, egg casing, egg whites. Um, you may use, not super gross, but you can also use like fish bladders. I think that's you can, gross. Eggs. No, the fish. The fish, it. fish definitely, and you can use different like cow and animal parts. Um, I, to that's why they have. It. That's why they have kosher wines, right? Yeah, vegan or not vegan. So a lot tension vegans. Most wines are not, not vegan, vegan because of the way that they find it. And the mice blood. They use animal. No, yeah, that too. <laughs> but they use animal products yeah. to find it. So which is sad. They're both aesthetic things, but there are like natural ways to find. You can use different like. Uh, this wine actually is fine. Let me see. They use some interesting technique. I think I put it in here. They use... Hmm. So, you're, it's not so basically there. you're saying you can have a natural wine that, that has been fined. It's just they use a different, they use a kind of, different a natural method. They use a natural like method. Like there's some wine. minerals you can use. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, Got it. And um, what the last element, at least that comes to mind about what is natural wine, is the amount of preservatives that you add into it. Mm -hmm. And this, I feel like, is what gives me the hangover. I don't know. It does to some people. Some people are allergic, and the preservative in most wines is sulfites, mm -hmm. SO2. And you'll see on almost every wine label, assuming this one has it too, it'll say contains sulfites right here on the bottom. Yeah. And that's a big topic of discussion. It is. Some people say it gives you hangovers. Some science says it doesn't. Some people are actually allergic to it. But what's interesting to note is that sulfites are produced in the winemaking process no matter what. It's just, mm -hmm. it's natural. It happens. Sulfites are always made. You're, Even if you you're add... You're always going to have them in your wine. Yeah. It's like unavoidable. Even if you add none, yeah. you still, you have, still to have to put them. contained sulfites on the label because it's... But, it, but it'll be significantly less than other wines, right? The totally. Aren't natural wines. Totally. And a whole nother podcast too, but different countries have different standards on the amount of sulfites you can add SO2 as a preservative at the end of the winemaking process. Rough estimate, like in the US, you can add like 400, 500, 600 parts per million SO2. To where in some European countries, it's only like 100 or 150 they cap you at. So either they know something more than us there, that they're harmful or not, or that they don't think it's good for our bodies, but mm -hmm. I think there's something to it. Um, and that's a big thing to yeah. uh, dispute is um, sulfites or not. It's not a, it's okay if it has some sulfites. It's a natural way to preserve the wine. So yeah. That's a whole lot of things. I think that we should, we don't have to rank them. Let, let's, let's talk about them. There's no, organic yeah, farming, important. native yeast, hand harvested grapes, adding no additions in the cellar. Mm -hmm. Do you find the wine? Do you filter the wine? Um, and do you add preservatives like SO2 at the end of winemaking? Can, yeah. What do you like, when you're looking at a wine, what's like most important to you? Um, I mean, or some of the things. Right now in my life, I feel like, I'm more likely to drink a wine where I know, okay, so like, let's say my friend down the street is like, has a vineyard or has some vines and is growing wine. And I know that he may not be organically certified, but he's doing like a really good job. And I know there's not like pesticides and crazy stuff going into it. Maybe, yeah. maybe he does filtering. Maybe he dumps some, something in there, you know, just a little bit to like tamper with it. I guess I would take that over, um, uh, yeah, I think I would I would take that first. I so guess. like farming, the farming and yeah. yeah, me too. So yeah. number one, organic farming, biodynamic farming, whether it's certified or not, if they do it or if they're following that path um, and doing it to the best they can, that's number one. I mean, grandmas and my mom and nutritionists for years have been harping on by organic produce. When you go to the grocery store, I feel like. Most of us prefer to buy organic, right? Yeah, totally. So why shouldn't it be the same with wine? It's literally fermented grapes. Yeah. And we drink a lot of it. We eat more of it than we do healthy fruits and vegetables I some know. days. Totally. So it should, the wine diet. <laughs> it should be organically farmed. And it is kind of shocking to me 
for myself too like that we ha I, like I didn't even get into this until like a few years I mean I've yeah. always been into wine but I didn't get into natural wine until a few years ago like well I feel like because you're you're a health freak I'm yeah, a little bit of a health exactly, freak exactly which is shocking to me and I and I think that it's also interesting that it's now just now becoming like a very popular thing and people are like yeah. what is natural wine I mean nobody was searching that X so many years ago no. and I think it's interesting that it took so long for this to become a thing and I feel like Europe is just over there laughing at us like <laughs> Really? Really? <laughs> now I mean, you're worried about this? Now you're calling it, and maybe yeah. they're laughing that we're calling it natural wine and then capitalizing And they just call it wine. They, they're like, this is how we've been making wine. Yeah, get on board. I, it kind of is Americans' fault for developing pesticides, yeah. developing um, uh, preservatives, and trying to make bigger, you know, mm -hmm. Frankenstein wines. We can tweak the flavor with yeast. We can yeah. make it bolder by adding yeast and sugar. Yeah. No need. Let's no. taste Let the, the terroir. Be the great. Let the great be the great. Yeah. And and it's funny because I remember, you know, even like eight years ago, me coming home from Europe and being like, I don't get it. I drink wine every mm. moment of the day and cheese and bread. Did you say eight year old me? Eight years ago. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and, <laughs> That would be impressive. And I, you know, I feel fantastic. I've never felt so good. And I do think back to what Remington was saying, it all does come down to the farming. Like over in Europe, when you're traveling, what you're, yeah, sure, you're eating, you know, cheese and bread and, and copious amounts of wine, yeah. but it's like clean. Yeah. It's a lot cleaner than, than, it is. than some of the Sadly, stuff that we get, is. that we eat here, which is very sad, but yeah. That so farming, farming. And I think my number two for me might be the native yeast because. I think it plays mm. a huge role. To me, the terroir is like twofold. It's the soil and the sun and the weather and where mm. it's located. And then it's the living organism on the grapes. I think yeah. that changes around the world where you are. And that plays a part in flavoring. If we're going to make a wine, we're in Hermosa Beach right now. So <laughs> the yeast in Hermosa Beach are going to be wildly different than they are in Bordeaux. Yeah. Hermosa Beach doesn't have any famous wines yet. We can experiment around with that. We should. But um, made of yeast, that's definitely my number two. All the other things like finding filtering and the amount of SO2 you add at the end that kind of comes secondary. But look for wines that are responsibly farmed, ideally organic or above. Native yeast and then limited additions in the cellar. Yeah, totally. That was going to be my number two, I think, was the limited editions in the cellar mm -hmm. it just freaks me out like i forget what it was but in california the rule of how oh, yeah. what percentage the to be to classify as as a cabernet it was some i'm gonna i don't quote me on this but it was something crazy that i didn't expect uh, it was like percentage. 20 or 25 percent yeah. that they left room of anything that's not wine that could be added and it could still classify as a cabernet so yeah. for me, it was that was shocking. Like you could put anything if in there. If wine had an ingredients list, like yeah. most of our packaged foods do, right? It, it wouldn't would just shocking. say it wouldn't just say grapes. No, nope. I guarantee it. Um, and you'll see that with a lot of natural winemakers, they'll put ingredients sometimes, and it'll be like grapes, yeast, maybe a couple other things, and they're and they're being up upfront and parent and honest. Yeah. Um, I totally. Think also, that... I would love to say that when we were like brainstorming on this podcast we decided that one of the rules is we had to drink the entire bottle during the podcast and we have a ways to go here so um, chop, chop, yeah i know <laughs> maybe for the for the editing we can finish that yeah um, we may have to have the rule extend to the editing rule extend i think we covered a lot today i think we did all right so we also think it'd be fun to wrap up the episode with a game i don't know if we're gonna do this every episode but maybe but the game has to have to do with wine. Yes. So and who doesn't love to be drunk and play Never Have I Ever? Exactly. So we're going to do Never Have I Ever. This is going to be fun because we're besties and we know each other very well. So this And we be... generally do our shenanigans together. And we so... generally do our shenanigans together. So Ooh. this is going to be fun. So we're going to do Never Have I Ever. Three fingers each. Sure. And um, it has to, all the questions have to do. Pertain to wine. Yeah. Or drinking. Wine and drinking. No, yeah. wine. Specifically. Yeah, Drinking wine. Okay. Both. Deal. Drinking wine. That's what I mean. <laughs> okay. It can't be like, oh, did you ever drink a barrel of whiskey? That's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Because <laughs> okay. I've done this that clearly. Whiskey. This is not a, a barrel. whiskey podcast. All right. All right. You want to go first? Okay. I'll I start. Really I'll start. Okay. Damn. I got a good one too. Damn. Um, okay, you go never first. have I ever drank a bottle of wine 
that retails for more than, I don't know, $200 or more to my knowledge. You have? <laughs> yes. I haven't been drinking any nice, nice I didn't. Wine. I didn't pay for it, but I okay. gladly drank it. Nice. And I don't. Was it tasty? It was very tasty. I don't remember what it was, but it was mm. at a restaurant and it was very, very good in Vegas. <laughs> okay. Um, never have I ever drank Franzia. Ooh. <laughs> Never? You gave that away on your I first little intro. Away. I mean, that's I a, didn't grow up in this that's country. That's an American rite of passage. Well, I didn't grow up here. Okay. La di da da. It's not great. Although slapping the bag is the best part about drinking Franzia, but I there's no other do, great part about. I was gonna do about. that one too. Oh, but that's, I couldn't. That's but the I same. feel. No, I'm not gonna use that one. That's, that was a. That's like the same. One and done. Your turn. Never have I ever. Poured my glass of white wine into my red wine and drank it no. when I'm double fisting. No. To make a co-ferment. You've never done that? Mm -hmm. Is there something you haven't done, Remington? I haven't done that. Okay, well, neither have I. Yeah, okay, well, I didn't get you. <laughs> Keep going. All right. Um, never have I ever stolen a bottle of wine from my parents and, mm. and not told them. I honestly haven't done that either. I've oh, stole wow. spirits because mm. I was into that. Because you could fill up the vodka with water. Yeah, <laughs> but don't stick it in the freezer because water will freeze. Hey, listen, kids. Pro this tip to all of our 18 tricks. and under <laughs> listeners. Um, never have I ever broken a bottle of wine. Oh, yeah. You, and it went everywhere? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I was God. walking out of a store. I was going on like a weekend getaway and I had two actually you know what i think i was like 22 and i had two you know those massive bottles like the liter bottles oh, the yeah. yellow tail yeah oh yeah the shiraz mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. i had two of those and they were in like a flimsy bag and i was like opening my car door and the bag split and one shattered all over my white jeans so and i was poor at the time that was like a splurge for me so i like hobble back on into the store and they see my white jeans like covered Did in wine. Did they give you one for free? No, I had to pay for another one. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, I've also, dropped I've my... I've flipping off the camera for a long time now because <laughs> I have one finger left, but I've got a good okay, one. Okay, your turn. All right, Harrington. <clears throat> Never have I ever fallen as... Oh no, woken up either next to you in your bed or holding a bottle of wine. Empty or filled. Mm. So either you woke up and there was like a random bottle in your bed or whoever's bed, or you like fell asleep while you were holding the bottle of wine, like watching TV I, or something. I don't think I have. Oh, damn it. I honestly don't think I have. I for I've sure done you some have. embarrassing things like falling asleep, you know, clothes on, shoes on, that kind of thing, but never hold it. Never right. finished it by then. Okay. Mm. No bottle in the bed for you. No. Never have I ever drank a wine from Azerbaijan. That's a low blow. That to, is a do low they make blow. Good wine? Okay. Yeah, well obviously Put I'm drinking one. <laughs> <laughs> um that was a low blow. Fine. They make wine there? Yes, they do make wine. Um huh. the, actually the Probably the first wine I ever tasted, I think, was an Azerbaijani wine. It's called Yeti Gazelle. That's where I grew up, by the way, Azerbaijan, a cute little country on the Caspian Sea. And it's called Yeti Gazelle, which means seven beauties. I don't know if you've heard of that fairy tale about the mm -mm. seven beauties. No. It's it's cool. It's kind of like a Middle, Middle Eastern fairy tale. And uh, I think it was either a Mer Merlot or a Cab Sav or that kind of a blend. Hmm. Um, very sweet, but very delicious, and my parents were having it, and my dad gave me some. Aww. So I think that may have been my first my first taste you weren't, you drop weren't, of wine. You weren't going to mass in Azerbaijan <laughs> and drinking wine no, out of the cup? No, yeah. not really. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, anyway, winner, winner. Yeah, okay, well, good good job, Remington. Well. <laughs> I'll win the next one. Yeah. Well, should we wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap All it up. All right, well, that was delicious. This is we awesome. We haven't finished the Shannon yet, but so, trust me, we will. We will. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We chat a lot about natural wine. Um, I don't. I hope it was helpful. I think we gave you guys some good things to look for. Honestly, mm -hmm. the best thing to do if you have a good wine store, 
the, the people who work there are going to be on it. So the best thing to do is just walk in and don't be shy Most and of them. don't don't be nervous. Don't be shy. And just be Talk. like, yo, I don't be embarrassed. I want to try some natural wine. You don't need to know anything else but that. Just say that. And say natural wine. Natural wine and your price, your price range. Low intervention wine. wine. Yeah, or low intervention. And if they give you a funny stare and like a pretentious look, then say, then, screw you, I'm going to the next place. Or use my tip and just get like a French and gamble. And maybe it'll be fabulous. Deal. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching and listening to the Naked Wine Podcast. Yes. Uh, we're on Instagram. We are going to be on YouTube. If you're watching this, we already are. And yeah, we'll be here Streaming at everywhere some point again. Stream. We're very bad at, at deadlines and Remington is always late wherever he goes. So we're not going to decide when the next one is, but we'll, it'll be we'll soon. We'll give you a lot of content. And... Leave us reviews. Yes. Drop some comments. Let us know what you want to hear. Drop it to our DMs with questions. The naked one duo. Yeah. Good babe. Thank you for being my partner. Until next time. Bye. We're not together, by the way.